Good morning and Happy New Year. Wow, Happy 2022. That sounds strange, doesn't it? And yet uh, life moves on, the years roll by, and there's so much that's no different. And there'll be a lot that I hope will be different. We're still fighting COVID. We still have unrest in the world. We have division in our nation. Uh, we have uncertainty, you know, all around. Uh, people are still picking up from the devastations of storms all over the world, right up in Kentucky. Uh, they're still dealing with that and uh, grieving as they try to rebuild their lives. I can't imagine a tougher scenario. Uh, but we're, we're, we're in, in a new year. And so there's some things that uh, maybe we can think about. And I hope we can. I, I'm always reminded about new things in Scripture. Uh, way back in the book of Ezekiel and in uh, chapter 11, we're going to be reading from that this morning and then referencing some other scriptures. So let's have a word of prayer and then we'll jump right into it. Heavenly Father, thank you that in this new year, there'll be many new things that will be blessings to us and many new things that will be challenging to us. And we know that you're constant through all, all of it and you're with us through all of it to give us what we need and empower us to see it through. And so we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. In Ezekiel's day, the nation of Israel and Judah, the divided kingdom, had just about uh, come to the end of their devastation. And God comes to say something through the prophet that's very important. And he says, uh, Son of man, talking to Ezekiel, say this to your brothers and those. He says, uh, Therefore say, Thus says the Lord, I shall gather you from the peoples and assemble you out of the countries. Because they were scattered at this time because of the exile and the devastation of, war, of the losses in war. And he says, among you've been scattered, and I'll give you the land of Israel. I'm going to bring you back to you the land I gave you. And he says, when they come there, they will remove all the detestable things and abominations. You know, evil never gets any better. And finally, uh, if you're a true believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you just want to get rid of all that stuff that has separated you from God and caused you all this spiritual trouble. And he says, and I'll give them a new heart. I love that and put a new spirit within them, and I'll take the heart of stone and flesh and give them a heart of uh, stone out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances. And they'll be my people, and I will be their God. You know, every now and then we need something new, don't we? We need a refreshing, a revival. We need to think about things in a different way. And this is a prime opportunity for us right now, today, as we begin the new year, to think about things that God has promised to us that are going to be new. Well, and I think as we think about that and meditate upon that, we realize that, yes, we take some old things with us, and then there'll be new things to, that we'll face uh, in the new year. I remember in Scripture, in the book of Matthew, where Jesus has been giving some woes to people who are legalistic, and yet, evidently, there was a scribe who had become a disciple. And he said, this man is wise because he's taken some things that are old and some things that are new and made himself a disciple of mine. We don't give up everything because they're old. Uh, we don't give up traditions and whatever else. We don't give up uh, experiences. We don't give up life events because they're old. Those things, those memories and those events continue to color and cl uh, or cloud our thinking even today. And so we bring to today what we have brought from the past, and we bring the newness of today, and God acknowledges that. Think about some of the things that God promises that are new. He says, uh, Jesus said in John 18, he says, I give you a new commandment. This new commandment is that we love one another, uh, not just our neighbor as ourselves and love God, but by our love for one another, this new commandment would reveal a number of things to us. First of all, it would be a witness to the world that we're true disciples of Christ. You, you can't be a disciple of Christ if you avoid the body of Christ, if you avoid other believers in the body of Christ, if you avoid worshiping with them or, or being discipled with or by them, uh, if you avoid doing ministry with them. And on and on it goes. And you say, well, you can do that outside the church. Yes, but you can't do it any better than you can do it in the church. And so that's what he's talking about. This new commandment, loving, completely being selfless in the pattern of Jesus Christ, who was selfless. And we become very selfless as God builds our lives and we experience love for one another. 
This is a mark of our salvation. It's also a strength in our lives. Not only do we witness to others by that, but it's a strength to us. And by loving somebody else and receiving their love, the Bible makes it very clear that this is how we get to know God better, and this is how we grow in our lives spiritually. We grow spiritually, and we grow deeper spiritually in the context of the community. And loving one another demands a community and demands our participation in that. I fear today that many Christians uh, are sort of isolated. They think, well, I don't need anyone else. I can watch uh, television online, any worship service I want to, and that'll suffice for me. And they don't realize that they're drying up. It's my experience, after all these years in ministry, it's my experience that Christians who spend time in isolation by choice, now that's important because sometimes you can't, you can't be with the body of Christ because of illness or whatever. But those believers who spend time away from the body of Christ, away from loving and serving and being ministered to and ministering to the body of Christ, often become, in their isolation, bitter. They become judgmental. They become confused. They become unhappy. They become everything God would satisfy in their lives, or would not satisfy in their lives, or would overcome in their lives if they just came to church. If they just came to the body of Christ and worshiped and sang and taught and be taught and uh, did fellowship and eat together and whatever else, this builds our lives. And so Jesus said, here's something new for you every day of your life, a new commandment that you love one another, that you find ways to love people in the body of Christ, support people in the body of Christ. Because when you do, you receive it back and the blessings are blessing upon blessing upon blessing, and there's a deepening of your Christian and spiritual life. The Bible also says that when we're in Christ, we're a new creature. You remember that in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If anyone be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. All things have become new. Now, what you might not be aware of is that all things are becoming new, and tomorrow all things are becoming new. And the next day, all things are becoming new. And next month, all things are becoming new. Why is that? Because Christ, as the Lord of our lives, as the one member, the Son of God, of the sovereign triune God, has no beginning and has no end. So to us, that's new every day. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 3 that we're being changed from glory to glory. We're morphing into that. We're being transformed from glory to glory, because every day all things are new in Christ. They never get old because they're always new in Christ. Now, I have a testimony, and you might have a testimony of things in the past, or we might have some experiences of last year, but did you know today all things are new and made new? There's a regeneration that constantly goes on. This is the way we say it in theological circles. We have been saved. We will be saved, and today we are being saved. We are being made new. We are being transformed from a little bit of glory to more glory, a little bit of Christ-likeness to more Christ-likeness, a little bit of godliness to more godliness. This builds in our lives because God, eternal God, is, is to us new every morning. I love that because it means my worship is new every morning. It means my life is new every morning. No matter what I bring into the day from yesterday or from 10 years past, this is a new day. And I face this day realizing that there are going to be new challenges. And yet, just like in the past, God met me in a new way in the past to resource me and you and to bless us and to give us strength and give us wisdom. He's going to do the same thing today. I don't know about you, but I brought some issues from yesterday into today. And I'm going to bring some issues from today into tomorrow. And I need new wisdom, new discernment, new insight. And God said in his, to Ezekiel to tell the people, I'm going to give you a new heart, a new spirit, a new life, so that you can understand and receive from me all things new every day, all the time. I think that's absolutely wonderful and perfect. Well, not only that, the book of Hebrews reminds us that in Jesus Christ, we have a new 
and living way. And I'm going to, I'm going to find that and read that for us. In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 10, this new and living way that's so important to us. In verse 10, we read this. He says, and after saying above, he says, after saying uh, above, sacrificing and offering whole burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you've not desired. And the reason is that is because Christ has given us all that God desires. And when we come into Christ, we are him. Uh, we are in him and everything is satisfied. He says, he takes away the first, the old way of the law, and to establish the second. And he says, by this we will have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Christ once and for all for this new and this wonderful living way. The new and the living way. Now notice what he says in verse 20. He says, Since therefore, brethren, by we, we have this confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus Christ, by a new and living way, an always new and always alive way, we don't try to appropriate our relationship to God to get help in this world for our daily lives by offering sacrifices and keeping the law. We come to the one who was the perfect sacrifice, Jesus Christ, who kept the law perfectly on our behalf, and now he has opened the door for a new and living way, symbolized by the tearing of the temple from top to bottom, the renting of the curtain that separated God from man in the temple. And now we have a new and living way. It's new every day, and it's a new, uh, a new way every day. Because today I'm walking a different path than I did yesterday, and so are you. And then we find out that he's making all things new. God is going to make one day all things new. The sadness of having a past is that there's some things that we have been forgiven of in the past, but we have to carry forward the results of those things. God can forgive us for any sin, but uh, the circumstances abide with us. And yet one day, one day there's going to be, everything is going to be new. We're going to be in a new place, an eternal place called heaven. It's, a, it's the new earth. Our heaven is going to be a new earth. And it's going to be a different atmosphere there. The Bible says there's no need for sun and moon because the glory of God will light everything up. Isn't that amazing? No sea to surround. I, mean, I just can't imagine what that's going to be like. But it will be new forever. Can you imagine that? New forever. Do you like things that are new? Well, I like some things that are new, but I have a quirk in my life. Uh, when I get new clothes, I'm always hesitant to wear them. I don't know why. Maybe I need to go to a psychologist and get some help here. But when I get something new, like a present or a new vest or something like this, I put it up on the shelf because I'm one of these people that wear, I wear my clothes by my mood. And something new is not comforting to me. I, I may like it, and then after a while I'll put it on and then I really enjoy it. And it's new for a while. And so in heaven, we're going to have all things new every day. I like a new car, right? I like a new set of golf clubs. I, I like a lot of new things. It's exciting to get new things. Imagine living in a place where all things forever are new. I think something that's good too. You have to remember about God. The reason that God can make all things new is because he's eternal. And Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, the Godhead, uh, because that Godhead is eternal, then everything can be new to us. And what is that that is new? Well, in our physical life, we decline. And our mental acumen will decline. Uh, the older I get, I can realize my body is changing. It really is. And it's not for the better. It's not that I feel bad. I just can't do the things I used to do in the way I used to do them. I've had to find other ways to do that. I, I know that. But my spirit can be renewed day by day. A renewal of spirit day by day. Isn't that, isn't that great? And Paul writes about it, doesn't he, in Romans 12, 1 and 2. And he said, if we make a, ourselves constantly a living sacrifice which is our reasonable service of worship, then we can be renewed in our mind, a constant renewing of our mind until that day we find the Lord. And then it really kicks into high gear because all things are new there. But because of that, spiritual, uh, right now we're living temporally, spiritually, but one day we're going to live eternally. And so I'm reminded of this. What's, what's this about God? Well, he never changes, and because he never changes, it's always fresh and new to us. Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
and yet every morning his mercies are new to us. I think that's amazing to think about. God is everlasting, and the Holy Spirit was with us forever. That means his love never fails. I've said this to you many times, and I say it to our people many times, that because God is God and he's eternal, then his love is eternal and he's unchanging. His love is unchanging. He can never love you more and he will never love you less because he is love. And the only thing new about that is how we grow in that and receive that in dimension. So it's not that it's a different love. It's just deeper to us as we lean into it or grow into that love. Think about that love that never, ever ends and that's always new and fresh and is dimensional that we can go deeper and deeper and deeper and wider and wider into the love of God. Not only that, his care for us never changes. He doesn't care less for you just because you had a bad year. He doesn't care less for you because you're having a bad day, that you lost your temper or you lost your way or you had a moral failure. God cares for you. Now his discipline is there to bring us back to that care. And his care is everlasting. He will never, ever stop caring for you and me. And it, it's dimensional. It's new in the sense that we grow deeper into that day by day. Think about his purposes. The purpose of God for your life is not fully revealed when you become a Christian. The purpose of God for your life and the purposes that he has are those things that are revealed to us in the midst of our living in the midst of bringing whatever it is from the past and whatever it is today from the new, we realize more clearly the purposes of God for our lives. You know, somebody told me a long time ago, and it really helped me. He said, you know, when you're entering into ministry as a pastor, about five years is kind of orientation. You really don't know what you're doing. I didn't know what I was doing. You're learning about how to do things and how to be an effective pastor. Then he said, for about 15 or 20 years, uh, I mean, about the next 10 years, sorry, uh, you begin to tr try different things to see who you're going to be. You know what to do, but you're going to try to find out how to do it best. And then there's a period of about 15 or 20 years when you do that, you really and truly do that, and those are your successful years as a pastor. And then he said something remarkable to me. He said, after that, there'll come a point in time in your life when you will realize why a sovereign God put you on this earth. You know what? He was right. I know that purpose in my life now. And it feels like it's brand new. Now it's got a lot of the trappings of what I've lived in my past life. And it's got a lot of open doorways to what I'm going to live in days ahead. In other words, it feels somewhat comfortable, but it feels somewhat exciting because it's new. And your life is exactly like that. God has you here for a reason. And part of that is to determine what that is day by day for as long as you live till you come to the point where you can rest in the fact that you're truly accepted by God in Christ. He loves you, he cares for you, and he's put you on this earth for a reason. I think for parents, they realize when they have grandchildren, I'm here for my family. I think that's one thing you realize. I think that you realize as uh, maybe a, a, an owner of a business or, or a person who works in, I'm here for the next generation. I, I'm here to make sure those who take my place do well. Uh, whatever it is, it's multidimensional, but it's exciting, isn't it? And I, I know why God put me on this earth. I am who I am and I know why I'm here for the rest of my days. Well, God's forgiveness is constant. His mercies are new every morning. Uh, you can't run beyond the love of God and the forgiveness of God. You can't get so far away from God that he'll quit forgiving you when you come humbly before him and ask his forgiveness. You say, Gene, time after time, yes, time after time. Now, you and I get tired of confessing our sins. You, you and I get tired of the burden of our sins. You and I get tired of really uh, uh, finding out who we really are. We're not who we would like to be. But in Christ, our forgiveness is constant. The blood of Jesus Christ, John says in 1 John, cleanses us continually from our sins. And so we never really ever have to worry about that. And then what about his provision? You, you know, uh, every life is a journey. And most journeys have stories. In fact, we all have stories in life. And most stories in life about a, 
a man and a woman individually or when they come together and their family, when you live your life in that kind of way, it's a story of overcoming things. And so you begin. And our story in my family would be, well, when we married, we didn't have anything and we didn't have any furniture. We had a rented apartment that was, uh, we had to rent the furniture that was in there. And then we didn't have enough money. And at times we didn't have this and that, but we overcame. And then we went through this crisis, but we overcame. And it's because of God's constant provision. Now, you're going to go through something that will challenge your faith and your life and your, your uh, walk with the Lord in 2022. And so am I. But you know what? Because God is eternal and his care for us is constant. Forgiveness is constant. Love is constant. His provision is going to be constant. Now, that provision might include discernment and wisdom and insight. It, it might include financial provision. It might imp uh, uh, include some friend that comes along or even a stranger that helps out or makes a comment and changes your whole life or that whole situation that you happen to be in. But you will get through it because of God's provision. And God's provision is only possible because of his presence in our lives. We have a new and living way to go into the Lord's presence. Jesus took care of the old that always separated us from him, symbolized by that curtain in the temple that separated the Holy of Holies from where people worshiped. But not any longer, because of Jesus Christ, this new and living way, we go into the very presence of God in prayer and Bible study and meditation. He's always with us, and we claim his new mercies every day in our lives. So what we need to think about in 2022 is not the problems that we bring to it, not the problems that we might face, not even the blessings that we've experienced. But we need to focus on how can I stay in a constant, close presence through Jesus Christ with the Father. And with the aid of the Holy Spirit who bears fruit in our lives, we can stay close because we have this new and living way. Let's run to the presence of our Father every day in our lives this year. And we'll find that every day is not only a new day, but every provision, every care, Everything that he has for us is new every morning. Happy New Year. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that as we face this new year, you are eternal, so everything is new to us. Thank you for bringing to us new mercies every morning as we face our new days. And we pray this in confidence in Jesus' name. Amen.